Uh, what I'd like to do is to go back and talk about what the experience has been in uh, during this one year of maybe trying to start, um, I guess we're called a flagship project now, which is good, uh, a flagship project. Now, the, this, quote, immune cell atlas, uh, application of the HEA principles, and basically what the experience has been, uh, how I know there's a number of communities represented here, so we've been a little bit sort of going through the uh, maybe the pains or the difficulties of, of trying to do this. Um, so I'll just reca uh, recap a little bit of that. Um, and um, the, so this is one of these unusual slides. The, it's the PI's picture who's on the first slide. So it's a very talented PI. Uh, <laughs> now, so uh, there, are, there are two arms in the immune cell atlas uh, on, on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, and uh, Miriam uh, leads the, uh, the US arm. Uh, together with uh, with Nir, uh, Viv, and, my, and myself, and then on the on the UK side, uh, Lars, uh, Fiona, Paul, and uh, and Sarah Tuckman, who is here, um, in trying to put these two these two together. So, um, in in the kind of considerations, um, and which for the Mutant Atlas was inspired a little bit by uh, what we've learned from M. Jen and all, uh, which is sort of. Uh, I guess a consortium who has been exi in existence for about five to ten years, doing a little bit the same kind of things in the mass immune system. Um, obviously, we want to cover. It's not working. Uh, we want to cover all lineages. You have one, one, one that works. Yeah, now it's on. Now it's on. Okay, thanks. Um, we want to cover all lineages, not just the blood, but all lymphoid organs, and, um, and, and also tissues, uh, deep tissues, where immune responses are really happening. So lymphoid organs are almost, uh, definitely there's responses happening there, but that's, as, uh, as Ron will indicate, but where the immunocytes are patrolling in tissues is also critical. And, uh, and it's something which we've discussed and had uh, divergence of opinions from, uh, from some of our colleagues here is that for the immune system, it can't just be baseline. In other words, the state that the immune system acquires um, upon challenge, upon immunization, vaccination, or infection are, not, are simply not really seen or seen very infrequently in the baseline state. So we have to include in our definition of normal actually disease conditions, uh, immunization conditions, etc. And uh, yeah, that's basically saying the same thing. So in a sense, our, our mission statement is all immune cells, many locations, and many, many diseases. Now, <clears throat> this sounds a little bit crazy, but um, the, <clears throat> the solution we, had, we adopted was uh, to go for a, an overall uh, study design that it is both extremely, sh but it's shallow for any one site, any location, any disease. Um, and, but uh, as broad as possible, as broad as could be financially feasible. And there are important tenets here. This is not a vaccine study. This is not a study of any one disease, any one particular condition. Um, we're really only profiling diseases as experiments of nature. That may not be a very politically correct uh, phrasing, but that's really what we're using disease states for. What, can, what conditions can an immune cell be pushed in? Uh, and this is why, contrary to some of the organ, other organ groups that we'll be discussing uh, later, uh, later in this meeting, we've put up front this notion of disease and challenges. Um, and the unit is this, quote, location disease unit. So that could be a health spleen, rheumatoid arthritis synovium, a TB granuloma, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and definitely not with the intention of being exhaustive. Again, we're not studying tuberculosis but we're using different states, conditions of tuberculosis to see the cells and to discover those states. Um, and then the, uh, the skydive, I didn't know that was now in the, uh, in the official white paper. Um, in other words, this notion of first doing a general survey of all immunocytes, probably defining them by CD45, although that's not necessarily an absolute marker. And then taking each one of these populations that we can then define learning markers from these populations and zooming in. Now, we're just not zooming in on one of them. The idea is to zoom in on 10 or 12, basically to really get a complete description of <clears throat> what is present in one of these, uh, in one of these locations. Mm -hmm. So the, some lessons that we learned in the operation of the MGEN Consortium 
and that was key to the which has had some success in the in the immunological realm is having extremely rigorous SOPs for uh, for for cell preparation and, all, and going all the way down uh, to data processing and it may be actually if I had to put a plug or a question on what we were just discussing is I think there's uh, we have to be we have to have rigorous standards on what goes into the data coordination platform uh, lest it become sort of a tragedy the commons where uh, there's a lot of um, not necessarily well-controlled material. Um, so I think this for us would be one of the key tenets. Uh, using mature technologies as part of the project, we're not really planning to uh, define new ones, uh, merging specific interests of individual labs into the overall goal, and a goal that could not be achieved by any one group in particular, having an inbuilt structure. And then one of the essential aspects is making sure that we tailor display tools, and that's something which is part of our uh, of our operational definition, uh, such that the community can make uh, can make use of these. So where we arrived at was this notion of uh, having a starting nucleus uh, with a major hospital center, which had sort of basically access to, not to say all, but most of the major pathologies, together with uh, a major genomic and computational center. And fairly quickly, um, it, it also became apparent as as the discussions went around at the HC meeting or outside that, well, a number of people came up saying, well, how can I play, right? Uh, including our, our, our chair uh, of this session, um, the notion that we had to expand out from this core, sorry to put you on the spot, but <laughs> uh, to expand out from this core to, uh, to be able to, uh, such that the broader community uh, specialized clinical centers who have access to particular patient populations uh, can, be, can be involved, and also international sites, especially for underserved diseases that would not be present, uh, represented in, uh, in the usual settings. And then also, from this starting nucleus, which is based on single cell uh, RNA-seq techniques, which we feel are robust and ready today for prime time application, to fairly quickly graduate to uh, specially resolved RNA. So we actually, um, again, from these HCA meetings, gravitated to two of these. Uh, basically, our carbon copies at the Welcome in the UK and with the support of the Welcome and NIH, uh, Oxford, Oxford University Medical Center, together with Sanger, and then both partners and Sinai sort of got a little bit more complicated here in the US, together with the Broad Institute in, uh, in Boston. So this is the... Uh, the UK, I'm not sure where Lars is, but uh, this is the, the description of the UK arm, um, and this is the, the US version. And in the definition of <coughs> what would be included <coughs> in sort of the first pass of, uh, of, uh, of analysis, uh, what you may notice here is that on the UK side, there was, um, there was a push towards more of the pathological conditions, and in fact, um, I think the UK is called the Humanatus of Immunopathology, so it's like a deviation in semantics, whereas the US, US side focused a little bit more on healthy, um, healthy material from healthy donors coming, as Aviv mentioned, from uh, hopefully as much as possible surgical resections or warm autopsies, biopsies, etc. Um, and then where the data would go, so as Aviv mentioned, the, uh, the data will Sorry. will flow and will be immediately put up into the data coordination platform. So uh, it's, it's great that it's, uh, that it's already, already up and running. But with the notion of um, also developing, and that continues a little bit the MGen tradition, uh, portals for data access, data browsing um, that we are thinking about developing and implementing uh, with ideas to really push the envelope. And one of the applications for funding was titled Not Your Grandfather's Portal. So... Um, and there's ideas of using virtual reality or artificial intelligence to take data portals for public access um, further than, than we have so far. So where do we stand today? <coughs> as um, as Aviv mentioned, uh, there's uh, a, pre a preliminary pilot uh, that's well underway. So I say I uh, put sick because one million cells for a preliminary pilot that's uh, Maybe a slight, a slight understatement, um, but there are data that have been that have been generated after some, uh, some uh, sort of toying around with what might be the the best uh, um, 
the best opportunities or the best uh, technical solutions. Uh, coordination between sites is being worked on. I should mention also that uh, our, the UK side is also going through uh, pilot projects. Um, that are, um, and then uh, also implementing, as we've mentioned, full-scale skydive. Um, in other words, can we actually do this? Can we get the full resolution with 200,000 cells in any one of these locations? And during the, during the one year, <coughs> uh, we went through uh, applications for full-scale support, uh, both from the Wellcome Trust in the UK and from, uh, and from NIH, NIAID in the, in the US. And um, I'd just like to uh, actually go through the responses. So we've had, uh, we've had return from these, from these applications. And um, I'd say that we're very optimistic that things will happen. Um, but we did stumble on both of them. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's actually useful because these were basically community, uh, community feedback. One thing I should say also is that <laughs> in developing these applications, which were in the UK, a uh, collaborative research award, which is a, a large collaborative uh, grant for, for a few million pounds, and the US, a very large R01 at the level of $2 million or so per year. Um, there was extremely strong support both from NAID, NIH, um, and, for, and for the Wellcome Trust, who are genuinely uh, very supportive of, uh, of these programs. The, but of course, this was, these were put in normal study sections of people who did, would not participate in these discussions. So this was interesting <laughs> feedback from the community itself. So um, I'm just going to go through the points because I think they, um, they illustrate some of the issues we were discussing around the, the, the white paper and that uh, in the Alex's session we might go back. So the green is the good points. So in both uh, review committees, there was actually great enthusiasm for the general concept, extraordinary feat, useful decades to come, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, complimenting the PIs on being the best and possible. Of course, whenever you reject a grant, you say that anyway. So we, didn't, we took that with a grain of salt. Um, but uh, more importantly, there was uh, in both, in, on both sides very strong support for the general, for the general concept. Um, the, <clears throat> in the U.S., it's interesting, the U.S. reviewers like this concept of the, the broad but shallow using diseases um, as, uh, as basically uh, as experiments of nature, as I mentioned. Uh, this was much harder, uh, much less accepted in the U.K. panel. People said, oh, no, this will not work. You have too many diseases. You need to focus down on a few. And there was definitely... In the UK, that risk of gen being generated bad data, which of course would concern if we pollute uh, what's being put out by the ICA uh, with poor quality data, it's actually a huge disservice to the community. Uh, and in the US side, uh, people weren't convinced that the skydive would work, that we'd be able to get the markers that it would allow us to refine the cell populations with the two level. And that's something which we're actually working on uh, to, to demonstrate that, no, this is a workable, uh, workable model. Um, there were some sort of grantsmanship things we didn't really describe correctly, and uh, this is non-trivial how Oxford and Sanger would coordinate, or how, especially New York and Boston, that, that is definitely a concern. Um, and then also how the transatlantic collaboration. <laughs> And um, so this was actually one of, one of the key ones. Um, how do we integrate other, other players into this, into, into the effort? Uh, that it definitely shouldn't be sort of a small club uh, that's, that's generating it's something which we obviously were, were highly cognizant of from, from the very beginning. Uh, it was difficult to put into a 12-page application. Uh, others suggested that actually the whole concept of, and this may speak to the HCA, the whole concept of data generation as one coordinated uh, effort was not really worthwhile. That it would be much better to curate data generated sort of organically by individual efforts uh, in, in different locations. Uh, and this is something which, with the kind of data processing one can do on single cell data, might not actually be worth, uh, be worth discussing. Um, another important one was who these data are for. Um, in other words, 
It's only going to be the select few people who know how to use and can use single cell data um, and were they really going to be uh, useful for the community. So uh, that obviously we need to demonstrate, no, we can make it available to uh, standard uh, everyday immunologists. Uh, and this one was interesting. Um, well, we, we shouldn't bother <laughs> since the wealth, since the NIH. <laughs> So now that they've bone with both been rejected, we're good. Um, <laughs> and, and then along the same lines, um, well, why should the NIH or the Wellcome Fund it? Because everybody knows that the HCA has deep pockets, and then the Chan Zuckerberg is funding the whole thing. Uh -huh. So. Um, uh, well, these are unfortunately not jokes. <laughs> we're, we're live streamers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, but for the most part, these, so these are the issues that came up during review. Um, I think, and I think, again, on both sides, there has been support. All reviewers told us, and yes, yes, we want to see this application back. Plug in the holes, show us you can do skydive, and then we'll be fine. Um, so I think there's, we're very optimistic that this is going to happen, and then uh, um, I'm sure that the NIH and the Welcome can get together um, and see that it's not not overlapping. Um, so that's a little bit where where the where the project uh, the project stands. Um, I'm not sure what this slide is supposed to say. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>